Hey, so I get asked a lot about my launch pad and this thing is a beast. So let's get into it. Right away, you can see it's a lot different than your standard model rocket launch pad. There's a lot going on here, it has a lot of mechanisms, and it has a really great presence when the launch sequence actually goes down. All the mechanisms add to the spectacle of the scene of the launch, but they also have a functional role in allowing the rocket to launch safely and making it easy to operate. One of the biggest drawbacks with this type setup is its setup. It takes a long time to get out to the field lug around and get established on the ground. There's a lot of systems to connect, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, so I test it multiple times before I leave and while I'm at the launch site. In full-size rockets, the ground system is often much more complicated than the flight system. Ground support equipment is just as important as the flight hardware. It makes up a large portion of the effort that goes into actually flying real-world rockets, and all of the work around it helps make sure that that rocket and that flight vehicle performs as intended. My launch pad has to perform a few key tasks. It has to successfully transport the rocket to the launch site without breaking it. It has to keep the rocket upright until the moment of launch. It has to ignite the engine and it has to make sure that all the systems in the rocket are working before it ignites that engine. As a result, I've been through a lot of iterations with it. My first one, not the best, was actually made of foam core and I used it to kind of feel out how I would go into this project. The only thing that this launch pad maintains that that launch pad had is the flame trench. So there's a steel flame deflector that moves the soot, the hot gases and the flames out away from the launch pad and it prevents scorching of the ground and it's actually a requirement from the National Association of Rocketry. The entire launch pad is designed in CAD, which means I can kind of fit check and test everything out before exporting it to files. All of the wood is cut with a CNC router, which makes it really easy, but at the same time you can do any of this work with hand tools. It has a bunch of 3D printed parts that allow everything to bracket together. In big aerospace, we would design a launch pad to be tailored to a specific rocket. But in my case, I can't really afford to have the multiple launch pads lying around to fly different rockets, so I've made one launch pad that can fly any rocket. It uses a modular clamp system that can grab onto any size tube between about 60 millimeters and 140 millimeters. And it has the ability to lay down on its side, which accommodates working on the rocket on its side before turning it vertical and preparing for launch. During the launch sequence, the whole thing moves away from the rocket to get out of the way and allows it to fly freely off the pad. There's a battery on board that ignites the rocket motor and a safety switch that actually prevents the circuit from being completed and allows me to work on things safely right up to the moment of launch. So on board, there's a lot of mechanisms. This is both a blessing and a curse. It makes working on it very, very annoying, but it allows multiple safety interlocks within the pad. The biggest mechanism on the launch pad is the strong back. This basically forms the core structure of the pad that holds up the rocket and steadies it up until the moment of launch. This structure is big, long, heavy, and as a result of its movement, I had to install a gas piston damper to prevent it from shaking everything. It's a night and day difference between the hard stop that I used to have and how it is now where it smoothly retracts. Mounted to the strong back are a couple other mechanisms that assist the rocket in getting off the ground. First of which is a vehicle support. Um, that is this claw on the top that opens up and below that is an umbilical arm that retracts from the body of the rocket. 
Originally, when I first set out on this project, I thought I could use electrical connections from the umbilical to the rocket, have them disconnect, and then the rocket fly off. In practice, this is a lot harder than it sounds. Making connections that connect reliably and then disconnect reliably are really, really difficult. I ended up going with some servo connectors that I stripped down and was able to make just barely connect. And then when the umbilical would retract, it would pull the wires free. Arguably one of the most important parts of this launch pad is the clamp system. The clamps on this pad have been through multiple iterations. My original version was not nearly as strong as the newer one that uses a latch and servo isolated mechanism, which is much, much better. Uh, I've talked about this in another video, so I won't go too much into it, but on the pad, the clamps hold the rocket in place until the moment of launch. Um, these clamps are really necessary for a TVC rocket like this because there's no launch rail for it to ride up as it's gaining speed and leaving the pad. The clamps ensure that it stays vertical until the moment of ignition, and they get to deny the rocket flight if there's something that's off. In an abort scenario, the clamps add an added benefit of being able to stop the rocket from flying even while the engine is lit. They also work for static fires. I can do engine mount tests in them, and because everything's modular, it fits any rocket and they're on sliders to be able to move in and out into place. The whole thing is controlled via a secondary console that is connected to an ethernet cable that I have to spool out on the field and connect at each end to actually control everything. So on that is a turnkey to be able to arm and disarm the firing sequence, and a firing switch and an abort switch. There's a few other switches, but right now they aren't really assigned to anything. With the launch signal sent, the pad begins counting down at 20 seconds. From this point, everything is autonomous and it runs the countdown on its own. The control console can abort the countdown at any moment, so if I see something that's wrong, the wind picks up, or the rocket isn't actually ready for flight, I can abort the countdown immediately. At the T-2 mark, we send the signal from the launch computer to the flight computer. So the ground system has a wire that runs up the side of the rocket and into its flight computer, and that signal tells the rocket that it is time to fly. Additionally, the rocket can send a signal back to the ground computer saying it is ready to fly. And with that two-factor authentication, it confirms that both flight computer and ground system are in accordance with each other, and we're okay to proceed for launch. Otherwise, it can abort the countdown and we can have a fault and stop right there before we have any problems. Now, in the event that everything's fine and all the systems pass, the flight computer sends a signal back to the pad and the pad authorizes the launch. After the flight vehicle has authorized the launch, the ground computer continues the countdown to T minus zero. At T minus zero, the whole assembly retracts. So the vehicle stabilizer opens at the top, the umbilical retracts, and the strong back retract mechanisms down at the base begin to release. The whole assembly is pulled backwards and it clears the rocket. Only a fraction of a second later, the ignition system is energized. The rocket motor is ignited. Clamp release only occurs though when a specialized microphone down at the base of the pad detects the sound of the engine igniting. The engine ignition sound is very loud, so the microphone is tuned to only accept noises that are incredibly loud right next to it. This means that the rocket is only released to flight if the engine is lit and running. All of these act as safety interlocks that prevent a runaway vehicle and make sure that the rocket has the best chance for success on launch. From there, the whole thing is released and it clears the tower and goes on its way. So that, that's a basic overview of how this all works. Um, it is a pretty interesting system. It's kind of a pain to set up, but it always puts on a great show. Uh, down the road, I have a few upgrades for it. Uh, one of them I wanna do definitely is beautifying the back a bit. 
uh, adding some truss work and covers so that some of the wires aren't as exposed. Uh, and I also definitely want to add a custom 3D printed ground computer circuit board so that everything is a little more rugged. Right now, as things are, it's pretty ramshackle and wires can come unplugged and a lot of the time when I have to cancel a launch or scrub on site, the, uh, the issue comes down to like wires being unplugged or something like that, which is just a basic reliability issue. It'd also be pretty great as well to have a wireless system on board to where I can communicate with the launch pad without having to string out a wire. That just smooths my timeline for assembling at the launch site and getting things ready. Um, that's definitely something I'd like to do down the road, but as for now, this setup works really well and I've had a lot of success with it. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Um, if you really like you know, a launch pad like this or any of the parts on board, um, I have all the parts the files for the CNC routing and everything included on my Patreon. So if you want to build while I'm building and kind of go through this whole process with me, it's all available there. Um, everything is pretty in a state of flux, so it's always kind of changing and I'm always improving things even if it's slightly incremental. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.